Hey everybody, welcome to the Scott Stebbin Podcast. Uh, today we're going to be uh, continuing on through the Exercising Our Faith series that I'm doing with my congregation, and we're going to be talking about the topic of simplicity. Now joining me on this podcast is a local artist in our community. His name is John Mark Galetto. Uh, he is also a guy who loves the Word of God. He studies diligently, and even in our Bible studies, I look at his Bible, and he has notes in the margin, in between the text, everything. He's always reading and writing and really studying God's Word, and it's just um, fascinating to uh, to study with him. So, John Mark, thank you for uh, joining me, and welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so John Mark uh, kind of mentioned you're an artist, so just uh, for everyone who's listening, kind of give some information about who you are, what you do, and um, and some other fun facts about yourself. <laughs> I'm 44, I'm husband, and have uh, two children. I have a boy and a girl. And um, yeah, I've been an artist since uh, about 1995. I uh, went to the University of Delaware and um, been blessed to be able to pursue my passions this whole time and had uh, pretty good success. And yeah, um, it's nice to be able to get to do what you want to do and have the Lord provide. And um, yeah, so uh, Susan, my wife, is my publisher, so she handles my career and selling the artwork through galleries across the country and in um, in the UK. So yeah, I'm, I'm very blessed to be an artist. I enjoy it. All right, cool. Well, thank you for giving that information. Um, so when I think about the concept of sl- simplicity and kind of what we've been looking at as far as the inward disciplines, meditation, prayer, fasting, studying, you know, a lot of things that I kept coming across while practicing these disciplines has been a concept of focusing, like really focusing on a central point, which is usually focusing on the Lord uh, through all these uh, different things, whether it's in his word or through prayer. Um, So when it comes to simplicity, it almost seems like what simplicity is and kind of a definition that I would kind of see it is just being able to untangle kind of the complexities of life and just be able to live uh, simply. Um, So how would Mm -hmm. you define simplicity? Um, I would define it the way our Lord lived. Um, Of course, he's, he's the pattern son for us. And he it's not that he was aloof but he was always in tune with the father and he lived from that point of view and not from the point of view of what others thought or trying to keep up with the joneses was never anything that he got involved in so having that singular focus of what's the father's will for me today and here and now I think that really, it really went a long way to keeping it simple for him. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting too, when you think about the way he lives his life is that um, I think even just kind of in this culture today, there's been kind of this shift where you have kind of people who are living very minimalistic and you, you know, you look at, I don't, I don't even know if it's on TV because I don't really watch TV, but I see things like, oh, people who are living in like tiny little houses or people mm-hmm. who are basically just selling all their stuff and they're really downsizing or they're living in like shipping crates that they <laughs> refurbish into homes. So they're really right. kind of living very um, simply. And you mentioned, you know, your definition of simplicity is, you know, living the way Jesus lived, which, you know, a lot of times he didn't really have um, – anything you know foxes may have their holes birds may have their nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head um and a lot of times oh what was that i'm sorry that's that's the scripture i was thinking of too (laughs) but even Mm. when i think about that like you know he always lived life just kind of day to day he didn't worry about you know what was happening or anything. And plus most of the time he was always provided through the hospitality of others. Mm -hmm. That's true. So when it comes to, I guess like, how do you, I guess from your own life, you know, when we look at Jesus's life and even look at our, your own life, how are in some ways you're living very simplistic? 
Well, my my uh, my job is is one way because I certainly could have um, gone after money. Um, it was very difficult for me when I came out of college to have no income for like five or six years, and that's that's not everybody's path. But that was part of my journey and my walk of faith was: um, Are you going to do what that what you feel that I want you to do, or are you going to run after uh, money? So. I really had to give a hundred percent of myself to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the Lord, the Lord was always faithful. The Lord always provided. And, um, you know, after, after a while, um, you know, things did increase, but I, I had to, um, I had to lay it all, all on the line for what we're talking about. And he, he never once abandoned me. Mm. Yeah. And I think, and, and he, cause I hear a lot of people, you know, they say stuff like that. They say, you know, they were able to give up like the high paying job, whether they were like a corporate counsel or counselor in a corporate setting. And now they're on the beaches of California making boats because, you know, they kind of gave up that high money lifestyle. Um, mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, and people always say like, Oh, living a simple life is in a way a blessed life. Uh, but I mm -hmm. think there's also this mentality where there's a lot of people who are not ready to make that plunge. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so, and you know, I, I think about, so I'm kind of, you know, I kind of struggle with the fact of like, you know, if we see people say, well, this is the easy way to do it. And plus, you know, you have to think about it. The people who usually are saying that uh, besides you, because obviously I don't see you as a big multimillionaire that like <laughs> left everything behind to go paint pictures. Um, yeah. But, you know, a lot of times when people say they live a simple life, you know, they start off in the tech industry. They started off on Wall Street. So they already have probably a huge amount of savings so they could easily just walk away and do that. And right. that's always been kind of a criticism that I've always seen is, well, yeah, you can say it's an easy to live a simple life because you had it all. Where some of us who mm -hmm. are living our passions or some of us who are struggling um, who are kind of on the lower um, side of the social ed economic structure, you know, for them to say, well, hey, give up all your stuff and live simply, you know, for them, I think it's like, well, easier said than done. So I guess what kind of, so I guess kind of what feelings or even like what scriptures would you use to tell someone like, hey, here's, here's a good way to live a simplistic life? Um, we looked at this topic, um, at, at Bible study this morning, and, um, it was interesting how it brought us to the book of Ecclesiastes, mm. um, where, you know, the Psalm is looking for what is it good for a man to do? And he, he himself was, was a poster child for the opposite of what we're talking about, you mm -hmm. know, um, and, uh, so, but he, he came down to, you know, the kingdom of God. He came down to, um, you know, he who keeps the royal command experiences no trouble for a wise heart knows the proper time and procedure for to everything there is a proper time and procedure, you know, and that, that takes me right back to Jesus again, you know, and the necessity of having a spirit led life, you know, and on the other hand, Solomon was looking at, why are people pursuing, you know, money and things the way that they are? And he brought it down to, it was basically their envy of what everyone else has. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand is the scripture that from Matthew six, from the sermon on the Mount was look at the birds of the air, look at the grass of the field. They don't toil or spin, but your heavenly father feeds them. And so he, just point blank tells us not to go after everything that the, that the world does. And we actually, I asked my family, I said, well, why, why should we not just join a monastery, <laughs> you know, and live, and live simply that way. And so we came back to the scripture that says that we need to be in the world, but not of it. And yeah. um, I'd love to be in a monastery for maybe like a month, have that sabbatical, but you got to come back and, you know, Jesus went to the mountain, but then he came down, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and, and it's 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 kind of mentioned you mentioned the whole monastery because I think with COVID nineteen we're all kind of living in like our own little monasteries <laughs> within our homes. But it's a, um, it's a nice it's a nice break, but I don't want this to be permanent. <laughs> yeah, no joke. I, I agree with you. you, you and, and it's interesting you bring up the Book of Ecclesiastes because you know you think about you know the author of Ecclesiastes talking about. You know, I had all this great wealth, but it was meaningless, a chasing after a win. But then he also mm-hmm. talks about his wisdom. Mm-hmm. I had all this great wisdom, but even that was folly. And, mm-hmm. you know, so even when I think about, you know, if we look at the book of Ecclesiastes and how here's a guy who had it all and basically saying it's like nothing, it's a chasing mm-hmm. after the win, it's vanity. Um, mm-hmm. Then part of me goes, well, is simplicity more than just, you know, not having a bunch of stuff here on earth. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think about um, Jesus's Sermon on the Mount when, and I believe it's when he's talking about oaths. And as he's talking about giving oaths and everything, he basically says, you know, simply at your yes be yes, your no be no. Mm -hmm. And I think about how, especially in our political, in our political realm, it seems like you can never get a straight answer, like a yes or a no. It's always, an if or a but or yeah, but you know, you, you know, it's almost like they're making things so complicated. And I think even sometimes just with speech and how we conduct our spiritual lives and some stuff, I think there's a way, I think there might be something in just our spirituality just to live simply. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when he when he kept repeating vanity of vanities in that book, the other thing that kept getting repeated was under the sun, under the sun, under the sun. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you think about in the book of Proverbs, which he also authored, but even if a fool keeps his mouth shut, he's thought to be wise. So, (laughs) you know, and and how how the how the wise you know use words with restraint, Um, and that that key of being a living from above the sun where if you think of Isaiah 58, you know, about if you don't go your own way, do as you please, or even speak your own words and then the blessings um, that he's promised. But that again, back to Jesus, that's how he lived. He did not go his own way. He did not do as he pleased. And he didn't even speak his own words. Mm-hmm. And, and, to to realize that he's the pattern for us and that his grace can get us there you know that you want to speak about the political system well we have to have the grace of god that cleanses our hearts you know and your your tongue reflects what's in your heart so you have to have both you have to have the grace to to cleanse us and then we have to have the spirit of god that we can live from above the sun live our lives um, to go on to the standard of what, of what Jesus is for us. Yeah. And, and I, and I think, you know, when I think about, and I think you're right when it comes to simplicity, it's not just an, even though we consider it an outward discipline because you're living a simple life, it's something that people can kind of see. It's also internal too. It is about, you know, our spiritual life. And I even, you know, even like before, you know, before you start talking about Ecclesiastes, the one thing I was thinking of is just uh, since we've been doing a Bible study at church in the book of Genesis, even going back to the garden. I mean, how simple was it for Adam and Eve to live there in the garden? I mean, all they did was like what they do, like name animals. Um, they didn't even have to work. They didn't even have to till the soil. That was after the fact. But everything in the garden was provided by God. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, it goes back to what Jesus says, you know, do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, you know, because, you know, how great are you than birds and foxes who are able to, you know, God provides for them or how flowers are able to grow and dress themselves. You know, you don't have to worry about all that stuff. So when I think about this concept of simplicity, it simply is both physical and spiritual. And it's basically, again, it's about focusing on God and be able to trust God that he is going to supply your need. Um, Mm -hmm. And again, you know, me thinking about, um, you know, just getting off the week of fasting, you know, when we kind of see, at least the first time we kind of see an institution of the fast was when 
and maybe I'm wrong, maybe you might be able to correct me on this, but it's when the Israelites were in the desert and God gave them manna. And I think it's in Deuteronomy 426, I believe, where, you know, he said, you know, I made you out there and I made you hunger so that you knew that, you know, bread does not come from man alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Or I mean, I mean, I mean that's, I'm really butchering that verse. So well, I don't that's, apologize. That's, that's been a very important passage to me. It's uh, Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 3, oh, okay. um, where, you know, he brought, he brought simplicity, mm-hmm. you know, and the funny thing about the manna where, you know, would you get would you get bored with that? Would you get would you get bored with that every day? Would you get bored with what Adam and Eve had before the fall? You know, is I think about the scripture that says Christ is all. Mm. You know, could you be satisfied with that? You know, he had the relationship where he would walk with with God in the cool of the eve. You know, would you be satisfied with that? Because it's really the opposite you know, that, that Eve went for, you know, I, I, as you were talking, I was also thinking of a passage in first John two, where everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the father, but from the world, the world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she wanted more. They had, they had paradise. They had everything you could ever want, but that they weren't, there wasn't satisfaction in that. Yeah. You know, and that's definitely simplicity. Yeah. And you bring up a, and and even just with this whole, I guess most of us are kind of living a very simple life with being in, uh, in isolation because we can't just like go out freely or when we do go out, we have to like get our mask on, get prepared to go out. Um, (laughs) And I I was thinking about just life, like, you know, I could easily go out and buy whatever I want. I could go on Amazon and if I got bored with, you know, a gadget, I could buy a new gadget if I wanted to. Um, And I feel like, you know, with everything being isolated and you just have to stay at home most of the time, you're really kind of seeing, you know, what are the things that matter? And even some of the things that, you know, I could get bored with are things that I'm finding new life in. And even just, you know, relationships with like your family, like, you know, the fact that instead of just always the hustle and bustle of life or, okay, I have to go and do this errand or run this errand or, or go here or go here or go to the gym or, you know, all these different things that we kind of make our to-do list to kind of mm-hmm. do, whether it's, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I th- I would think going to den- going to the gym could be considered essential in some ways because obviously I'm definitely <laughs> feeling how much I miss my gym. Um, <laughs> but even but even in that, you know, me not going to the gym, but me staying home and really talking with my son and and really just kind of understanding his thought to developing and really understanding how his mind's developing from what he's learning. And just naturally, you know, there's a lot of things like, you know, if, if everything was gone and I was living in a hut, you Mm -hmm. know, in the middle of nowhere and had no electricity or phones or social media or anything, but I had, you know, my wife and my kids, you know, I, I would be, I would be content with that. Right. I would be content with that, you know, because that's the thing that, you know, matters and you know or even if i had if everything was gone and the only thing i had was the bible well hey you know i'm content with that because you know that's the thing that's going to sustain me that's the mana that Mm -hmm. i need for my spiritual life yeah being satisfied is something that you cannot um it's it's either genuine or it's not um and um so much of those things the hustle and bustle of life and you think about concerts and going out to eat and going to bars and those kinds of things it's so much of it is trying to fill a hole that can never get filled you know and I'm not condemning those things in and of themselves going out to eat but when we get paired back the way we are right now um, you know you do see what's 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 got meaning and what doesn't yeah like you're saying and and, and, and and even just with this conversation, it makes me think back to the Samaritan woman at the well, 
where she always had to come out and get the water and get the water. And yet Jesus is basically telling her, you know, I can give you water where you'll never thirst again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking about himself. And, you know, I think a lot of times when it comes to living simplistic, it's simply, it's an art of letting go. It's letting go of these attachments that we have that we think we have control over, but in, but in reality, they have control over us. And mm -hmm. basically, you know, the, simplicity is freedom. Uh, simplicity is being generous. You know, those mm -hmm. are, I think that's are kind of more the core elements of living a simp living a life of simplicity is that you're free and you're generous and you're mm -hmm. not, you don't have to worry about trying to always store up treasures on this earth or trying to keeping up with the Joneses. Like you said, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff is, you know, it's not important anymore. Yeah. It also brought to my mind, if we look at Mary and Martha, mm -hmm. Lazarus's sisters, you know, Martha was busy with the preparations, busy with the preparations. And she was annoyed at her sister for just what you brought up from Deuteronomy 8, 3. Man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary, you know, what did Jesus say to Martha? You know, you're worried and bothered by so many things when a few things are necessary, really only one. And Mary has chosen the better part, which won't be taken away from her. Mm -hmm. That was, yes, him himself and also his word. You know, can we be, can we, can we sit at the master's feet? You know, can we be satisfied with that lifestyle of, you know, look at Psalm 23, you know, of just being led by him and he leads us and we get our peace and we get everything we have need of. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining me on this podcast, John. Definitely think we've gotten covered a, almost pretty much. I think we've covered everything on the discipline of simplicity. Is there anything else we haven't covered yet on simplicity? <laughs> uh, I, I think I think that was a uh, pretty broad reaching. Um, I was um, thinking if there was something from the minor prophets about it, but um, I think I think the only thing that I came up with from the minor prophets was um, what Jonah said in the belly of the fish mm. um, in Jonah two, six, he said that um, um, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs, mm. you know, and back to the birds that Jesus talked about that they don't toil. Um, you know, they have no worthless idols and they get the grace of God all day long. He, he feeds them. So, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, again, guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Um, again, you can listen to me on any podcast server, Apple Music, or Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you can listen to podcasts. You're probably going to find me on there. Uh, you can also find me on the um, on my YouTube page, uh, Scott Simon Ministries. You can listen to this podcast here and actually see the video podcast. If you're an audio listener, you can see the video of this so you can see my um, how shaggy I'm looking and how uh, John Mark has his quarantine haircut. So that's <laughs> always good, but we still have our facial hair growing out from this. And, um, oh, and also uh, John Mark, is there any website or any social media sites for people to go and look and engage in your artwork? Sure. They can go to my website at uh, John Mark and uh, you can look up uh, John Mark Gletto, the artist on Facebook and Instagram and also on Twitter. Together. All right. All right. Well, John Mark, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. And I hope you are ha have a great week. And hopefully I'll actually get to see you in person instead of through a computer screen. <laughs> We're so close and yet so far away. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day. Bye. God bless.